I, 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 I don't know and because I don't have a lot of details on the Google uh, uh, takedown in terms of timing and, and the, the ammo used. And as I said, it's like if I don't have data on it, I'm not going to bullshit around it. So I got hit too much with like schmoo balls and stuff like that. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course. It's like asking asking if RBN is still online. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. China. Good old China. Promised we're not going to uh, avoid them. Uh, Great Chinese Firewall is working pretty well. Okay, they're doing a good job and kind of an okay job considering the, the amount of population. Oh my god, he's got a missile already. <laughs> considering the amount of population that they have to take care of. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. I'm like, I'll take it like a man. <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah. um, so it's doing a kind of okay job in terms of keeping stuff going out and going in, but we'll see, you know, how good. Uh, it's it's kind of a proving ground for a lot of stuff because no one gives a shit if you if you own a system in China, uh, like own a system in China, it's going to stay up for for quite a long time. Thank you. Um, so it's it's kind of a proving ground for hackers and, and black hats. Uh, Great bulletproof hosting. They provided the network facilities when RBN had to kind of lay low for a little bit to get all the media attention off. And that facility stayed there. So it, it's very, you know, host fresh and those guys are still very in business. January 12th, China. <laughs> um, January 12th, Google goes out and says, we've been hacked by the Chinese. Um, I, I, I just got to read this officially because otherwise I'm going to fuck it up. In mid-December, we detected a highly sophisticated and targeted attack on our corporate infrastructure origina originating from China that resulted in the theft of intellectual property, blah, 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 blah. Okay? This is a senior VP in Google announcing that they've been having fun with China. Um, same goes for uh, Adobe. All right. Uh, once uh, once Google came out, you know, and kind of out of the closet and said we've been having it, yeah, up the, you know what, Adobe said that the same thing. More research. I read 40 companies that that got nailed really hard in in the Chinese alleged Chinese uh, attack. Uh, again, there there's not a lot. There's kind of sketchy details on it. Uh, I've heard like a pretty solid presentation during the first conference that was basically read out from paper that probably the Google attorneys wrote, <laughs> kind of funny. Um, but bottom line, it was the same MO, right, for all the companies. An IE zero day um, that just slammed right into Google, Adobe, 40 other companies, put a rootkit in it in, on, the, on the computers, reporting that back through DNS mainly, uh, which is uh, fortunately for Google pretty well monitored Okay, in Google. In the rest of the companies, almost zero recording. I mean, who logs DNS data? No one. All right. The only problem is that this entire attack, this entire MO, is classic, classic cybercrime in terms of attack vector, infection vector, persistent vector, everything you want. Um, Again, targeting finance, technical, technology, media, and chemical. That was the kind of the flip side. What the um, U.S. responded with is, and this is like an official U.S. government response, we look to the Chinese government for an explanation. <laughs> okay. Someone was playing in your playground and they shot at us. You're responsible for it. The ability to operate with confidence in cyberspace is critical, blah, blah, blah. Hillary Clinton... Secretary of State, all right? They're blaming a country for the attack of specific companies which was conducted using criminal MOs. I love the Chinese, all right? The Chinese reaction wasn't me. I'm just cutting it down to, like, what the essence of it. The U.S. is like, whoa, we're looking to you, blah, blah, blah. Wasn't me. Why? Because it's easy to say it wasn't me. Okay? Uh, there, there's been a quote, and I'm, I'm, you know, I can tweet later the, the, the source for this, uh, from a professor in, uh, in a university that worked in one of the two, uni one of the two universities 
um, from which the command control centers ran in China. Basically saying, you know, we know our network is fucked, quoting my friend Joe. <laughs> we know our network sucks. And we've been, you know, a target over and over and over again for criminals. Breaking the network, routing, you know, hosts and using them for criminal operations. This was not related directly to this whole Google China investigation. This was just kind of off the, uh, off the beaten path. But if you connect the, the two events, you realize why the Chinese have plausible deniability. It wasn't me. Look, the professor said, it's, you know, they've been screwed so many times, and they actually link it back to criminal things. A classier move that China actually took later on was, wasn't me. It was coming from the U.S. <laughs> prove that now. Um, which, again, you can do that. You can prove that the, the, the command control centers were connected somehow to IP addresses. Why? Because geography doesn't matter. I mean, seriously, blaming China, it's like blaming North Korea for the, you know, uh, DDoS during 4th of July. They didn't do it. Um, from the Chinese, from the, the, the Republic of China, this is, this is perfect because they get plausible deniability. The connection between the state and crime is fairly easy. Okay? Everything is running from, uh, from bull proof hosting networks. It's a win-win situation, and you can just do whatever the fuck you want to do. Okay? And everything is still running smoothly. So let's take a quick look at the future, or, or you know, my predictions on what's going on. <laughs> so Oracle, Oracle, what do you see? Ooh. What is this? OLPC, thank you very much. And OLPC is basically a dumbed down laptop running an operating system with basically no protection on it, which is shipped to Africa. Okay? Now, what happened what happens to a you know, standard operating system with not a lot of security software on it or protections? It gets infected. What happens when one computer gets infected? Boop, 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 boop. Botnet. <laughs> All right? So if I want to run like a big-ass botnet, just hand out free computers to third world countries that don't have enough money to spend on security software for those computers. Okay? So one of the reasons why this whole project is not really taking off as fast as, as it would have, should have been, is concerns over computer security, right? You can easily create a big-ass botnet just by handing out laptops. What are the kind of weapons of mass destruction of the future? On the cyber front, it still is connectivity. The more connectivity you have, and I said, the Israel geographically is the only case where size doesn't matter. The more you have, the bigger you are, right? The more power you have. So the more connectivity you have, whether it be in your country or in other countries where you can get access to and control systems, the more power you have to conduct cyber attacks. Last but not least, if you're talking about connectivity, cloud. Right? Um, <laughs> cloud is a classic case where you can put shit on, you know, anonymous, whatever, networks with tons of resilience, tons of redundancy, tons of connectivity, and just abuse it to do stuff. Right? A lot is going into looking at what, what's going on uh, in the clouds in terms of cybercrime and operations like that. Um, track it. Look out for it. Quickly summarizing, I've got two minutes left. Um, we've seen the good and the bad. All right? The good was the kind of training and formalization of cyber on the state level, on the nation level. Uh, getting more and more people to the good side and researching it, blah, 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 blah. The bad side is that the commercial side of it is still rocking. All right? You can buy tools like Zeus and, and Mariposa and other very good, you know, well-developed, supported uh, crime world crimeware bah, utilities uh, that are going to fly basically under the radar of most traditional security protections uh, and be very efficient. The ugly is always when good meets bad. <laughs> it's 
government's trying to cut corners, all right? Why should I do a lot of training and development and research when I can just buy this shit, all right? Why do I need to spend a lot of money and, again, resources and intelligence over, you know, attacking and, and conceiving an attack vector when I can just rent a botnet and DDoS Estonia or Georgia or whatever it is? It's even better because my relationship with, you know, RBN, if we're taking Russia, is kind of a, you know, friendly. <laughs> So I'm just going to need you to use your botnet for a few seconds. <laughs> All right, you can keep running. Um, how do we solve this? Or, or, you know, why aren't we that fucked? Because a lot has been going on on the cyber crime side. Cyber war, it's, you know, we're fucked for now. Uh, but on cyber crime, law enforcement actually started to realize that, you know what, the borders, are, you can't really put, you know, the, this whole interweb thingy is, is kind of hard to, to close down to jurisdiction and borders. So the, there's a lot of advancement going on in terms of cooperation and, and information sharing on the law enforcement side, right? Uh, if you look at the Mariposa investigation, you'll see that the FBI has commended the Slovenian police for arresting the guy that sold Mariposa to the Spanish guys. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> What does the FBI have to do with, you know, a Spanish botnet sold in Slovenia? Um, interesting stuff to read, by the way. Uh, so once, once we start fixing the cybercrime, kind of, you know, how do we protect against it and how do we work uh, in terms of nations and states, then we can start addressing cyber war and set rules and set regulations. Uh, one example which we can work on is nuclear treaties. All right? We're talking about weapons that can take down a country, that can wipe the entire population, that can disconnect Estonia from the internet and just shut it down because it's all running on the internet. Right? Once we set rules for that and learn from you know, the successes and the failures of trying to set rules for nuclear treaties, then we can start addressing the cyber front. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them now. My time is almost up, but I'll take a couple, and my contact details are above. Yes? Cyber... Sorry? Many of the so-called crimes on the statute books in most countries already exist. Theft, fraud, misrepresentation. Mm -hmm. When people are prosecuted, they're not prosecuted for cyber crimes. They're prosecuted for standard crimes committed using technology. So cyber crime is a misnomer in the same way that cyber war is. In wars, people die. Apart from the example of that, of, uh, that Syrian site, which is questionable, I've never actually seen anybody say, I've, someone has died from a cyber war. Mm -hmm. Cyber crime, yes, it's an issue, but it's, it's a wrong to, call, to label it so. It's, it, it doesn't gain anything because the problem is when you prosecute people, they're being prosecuted for theft. If, you, if you're carding, that's theft, misrepresentation. It's not a cyber crime. Cyber crime doesn't exist. That's what the police well, forces in many countries say. Well, the police forces of many countries focus on the lowest hanging fruit of cyber crime. I haven't seen like a cyber crime leader, group leader, being arrested or prosecuted. All the prosecutions, again, that I have seen and read about were of the foot soldiers. The guys that were doing the, the money muling, the actual carding, right? Carding by itself, by the way, is not a cybercrime operation. It's part of a bigger organization. Someone is responsible for this. Uh, and police forces have been focusing on those lowest hanging fruit. That's, that's again, my view on cybercrime. Uh, they've been having a very, very hard job getting to, uh, to the guys actually running this. If I, I've used to work with the, like the, the high-tech high-tech crime unit in the Netherlands. Um, I've worked with law enforcement in the UK, in Israel, in, in, uh, in the US. They know who these guys are, basically. They just can't prosecute them because they're, it's hard to connect. On, on the war front, um, I almost agree with you. You're not going to see a lot of people die because they don't have Twitter or Facebook. But, but, if you take, but if you take, for example, taking down a, a power grid system, you can definitely see people die because they, they don't have 